Is this another home run from Bardstown Bourbon Company? Let's dive into their high wheat bourbon. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So today we are taking a look at a brand new release, the newest addition to the Origin series from Bardstown Bourbon Company. This is their high wheat bourbon mash bill. Very interesting. I actually had no word on my radar that the Origin series was going to have more releases. They had already done their high rye bourbon, their weeded bottled and bond bourbon, which I absolutely love. All of them are good, but that one in particular is great. And then they did a, a rye that had a cherry wood finish. So I was not expecting more, but here they are with a high wheat mash bill upping the ante on the amount of wheat. I'm particularly excited because it was that weeded bottled and bond release for around $50. That was my absolute favorite from the original three and a bottle that I recommend a ton to people. So eager to dive in here. So what exactly is the mash bill since we've been talking about high wheat? Another great thing about Bardstown transparency, it's right here on the bottle. It says, 53% corn, 39% wheat, and 8% malted barley. And just as all the rest of the Origin series have been, it is aged six years old. And this is their own distillate from Bardstown. Other important stats here, it's 106 proof. Though, from what I understand, the barrel entry proof here was pretty dang low at 108 proof. They do that often to preserve a lot more of the sugars and flavors at least that's the idea. I think that's pretty cool for Bardstown to go that low. So 106 doesn't necessarily mean we're losing or watering down the whiskey all that much. Um, from what I understand, they were trying to experiment with an all wheat mash bill to do a weeded whiskey, but they didn't have enough wheat grain on hand back when this was being conceived. So they came up with this mash bill and 39% wheat is considerable. The uh, price here is $50, so right on par with the rest of the series. And I think just in general, Bardstown with the Origin series and then they acquired Green River, which has had their own core lineup come out that have all been very, very good for like 35 to 40 bucks. And then the full proof just came out for like 45 bucks. Ugh. Just great whiskey at affordable prices coming out, and it seems to be that Bardstown is generating a lot of that, which is great. In any case, the real question here is, how good is this weeded bourbon that has wheat kind of to the max? All right, let's go in on the nose here. Okay, very fresh. Lemon zesty. Mm. Yeah, lots of citrus. Strong apricot note. That's one interesting note that I've really started to learn to detect on whiskeys in general. And it's definitely coming through here. I did take a look at the website just to get acquainted with what this bottle is and the story behind it, and they did mention apricot as one of their notes, so I'm definitely getting that coming through. Kind of a vanilla caramel undertone. Maybe the slightest touch of a, a milk chocolate. More of a light milk chocolate, not a dark bitter chocolate, like that light creamy candy bar milk chocolate with all that citrus, a little bit of a spice to it. Even though it's wheat and you would expect that to give it a softer profile, it's got some punch. And then overall, it does also just have kind of wrapping around it is just pure wheat sweetness on the nose. It's very nice. It's a very nice nose and it is pungent. It's coming out of the glass without me having to do much work, which is great. Uh, that's what you 
want to see in a $50 bottle is that it still has lots of presence. All right, let's go in on the palette. Cheers. Mmm. Yeah. Man, that's good. Mmm. Okay, so it went darker and actually richer on the palette than I was expecting. A lot more oak. Oak and this warming spice. So when I drink weeded bourbons, I tend to get more of like a cinnamon, slow rolling spiciness, if it does have a, a considerable amount of spice, and that's what I'm getting here. As opposed to like a high rye bourbon, that might get you more of like a peppery, crackling kind of spice or rye spice in general. This has more of that rolling warmth to it. That's more of a cinnamon oak. But then a lot of that lemon, apricot, citrus note kind of comes through. Vanilla. It might even go a little darker than apricot. It might be more like a plum or something in that range in terms of the fruitiness on the palate. But I was taken aback by the amount of presence and oak and spice that's on the palate. The 106 proof, I think it honestly first sip might drink a little bit hotter than that, more like 110. All right, let's go in on the palate for the second sip. Now that we've got it on the palate, see if we can pick out some more flavors. Cheers. Hmm. All right, another very nice sip. More of the citrus came through. I think some of those darker tones folded down a little bit and this sip it came through more with the punchy lemon vanilla almost kind of like a lemon pound cake and vanilla experience some of that apricot still some of that spice and the oak is there but that sip seemed to live a little bit more on the higher register of, of palate notes where it's punchy citrusy and the first sip was more on the the base tones of the dark rich oak and spice kind of interesting that it's living on two different planes and giving me a different experience let's dive in for the the third sip this will be really where we evaluate the whiskey overall and we'll think about the finish in particular how long it lasts and what flavors it gives us all right cheers just wanted to quickly revisit the nose and it does have more toasty dry oak and some of that chocolate is starting to become more prominent too so the oak is more on the nose now that it's had a little bit of time to open up. All right, cheers. Mm. Okay, I think the third sip might have been the best sip because it kind of blended the two experiences I had on the first two. So on the front end of the palate, into the mid palate, I got a wave of that lemon citrus, apricot tartness, lemon pound cake kind of thing, some vanilla. And then it slow rolled into that cinnamon heat and oak, a little bit of barrel spice, that apricot sticks around. And the finish, I would say, is pretty long, uh, especially for a $50 bottle. It is sticking around with the spice, with the oak. The oak lingers for a while. And then that apricot note sticks with me. So a little bit of a tart fruitiness that goes along with the oak. Touch drying on the end because of the oak and leather. For only six years old, it really presents a lot of that. And then a, that milk chocolate was in there too on that sip. So it kind of gave me the best of both worlds and a really, really good experience. Okay. Well, has Bardstown released another hitter here? Uh, I think I'm going to answer that with yes. This is really, really good. Whatever their wheat grain is, whatever they're doing with weeded bourbon, they know what they're doing. Let's just say that. The Bottled and Bond release had a little more raspberry and dark chocolate. This one goes a lot more spice, oak, and kind of apricot, lemon, citrus. Definitely jumps out of the glass. The 106 proof is really nice. I think that gives it the right amount of spice. Like I can bet they were playing with the spice level here a bit and they found the sweet spot. Um, also helps the finish last quite a long, long time to have it be that higher proof. It is really good for 50 bucks. Uh, another great addition to the Origin series. I'm gonna have to definitely 
do this as kind of a head-to-head -head matchup with the Bob and Bond weeded because I need to know which one I like better. So maybe keep an eye out for that video soon, but this is right up there in my mind with how good that one is. The other two of the Origin series, the Standard High Rye Bourbon and the, uh, the Rye are good, but this one and the Bottled and Bond Wheat I think are on a different level. So if you see this one, it should be hitting stores relatively soon. And I know Bardstown's distribution is getting wider and wider by the day. I would highly recommend. It's an instant buy for me at $50. Bardstown has wowed me again. Really, really good stuff for the price. And again, it's just so good that somebody's holding down the market of staying steady at that $35 to $50 mark and you can still get great whiskey. All right, have you tried this one yet? Let me know in the comments below. Would love to know your thoughts on it. What are your thoughts on Bardstown and the Origin series as a whole? While you're at it, consider hitting the like button on this video. That's what gets it out to the most people. And then also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Hope to create a lot more great content as we ramp up to the end of the year and beyond. Till I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.